Hello everyone, it's me, Leahy. I just want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for watching this documentary. Everyone worked so hard to make this a reality, from Matt running the marathon to Matt filming it, among many others. I personally got a 33 on the ACT, so I am very familiar with achieving seemingly insurmountable goals. Always follow your dreams and chase your goals, no matter how hard they may seem to be achievable in the moment. Matt's Marathon has been a great inspiration for me throughout the past two years, from running a sub four Leahy 4x4 to coming to NIU. So once again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching this documentary, and please enjoy it. Leahy out. According to Wikipedia.org, the marathon is a long-distance foot race with a distance of 42.195 kilometers, 26 miles, 385 yards, usually run as a road race, but the distance can be covered on trail routes. More than 800 marathons are held throughout the world each year, with the vast majority of competitors being recreational athletes, as larger marathons can have tens of thousands of participants. The name Marathon comes from the legend of Philippides, the Greek messenger. The legend states that, while he was taking part in the Battle of Marathon, which took place in August or September of 490 BC, he witnessed a Persian vessel changing its course towards Athens as the battle was near a victorious end for the Greek army. He interpreted this as an attempt by the defeated Persians to rush into the city to claim a false victory or simply raid, hence claiming their authority over Greek land. 
It is said that he ran the entire distance to Athens without stopping, discarding his weapons and even clothes to lose as much weight as possible, and burst into the assembly, exclaiming Nenekekamen, translated to, We have won, before collapsing and dying. When the modern Olympics began in 1896, the initiators and organizers were looking for a great popularizing event, recalling the glory of ancient Greece. The use of the marathon as this event was heavily supported by Pierre de Coubertin, the founder of the modern Olympics, as well as by the Greeks. The winner of the first Olympic marathon on April 10, 1896 was Spiridon Louis, a Greek water carrier, in 2 hours, 58 minutes and 50 seconds. Today, approximately 0.05% of the American population has completed a marathon, according to Run Repeat. Out of this 0.05%, it is estimated that only 4% of all marathon runners of any age manage to break three hours, maristats.com. An exponentially fewer group of sub-three-hour marathoners accomplished such a feat as a high schooler. Enter Matthew Lifka, an 18-year-old high school senior from Wheaton, Illinois. To most, Matt was your typical successful high schooler. He had a good group of friends, was a member of the National Honors Society, and most notably, was a distinguished two-year captain of his high school's cross-country running team. However, what set Matt apart from his peers was a unique resilience and consistent discipline that enabled him to accomplish a rarely precedented feat in high school athletics. During his senior cross-country season, Matt's teammate Matt Dale began bringing his camera to the team's cross-country meets and uploading the race footage to YouTube. After a disappointing season, Lifka began to ramp up his mileage in preparation for a potential marathon and needed someone to provide him with water on the brutal long runs that sometimes numbered up to 21 miles. With his videographic background from the cross-country season, Dale decided to come along on some of the runs and document Lifka's training process. Thus, the concept of the marathon video was born. Chuck Sanders. How's it going? Carson Risky for the uh, marathon doc. We're here with Jacob Cluckhone for the uh, marathon video interview. We got Matt Lifka here for um, marathon video. Hello everyone. Documentary questions. Thank you for taking the time out of your uh, you know, long day at Bradley to um, do this. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I didn't start running with Matt until high school. We went to different middle schools. Well, we've known each other probably since sixth or seventh grade. We, I think he moved in around fifth or sixth grade. Um, you know, we play play basketball, do two v two with, with Spencer and his brother Justin. Uh, I don't know. We've just known each other for a while. We ran together to south. Yeah. So I met Matt uh, freshman year cross country, um, and we were in the same training group uh, starting sophomore year, I believe. He's a year younger than me, so I remember my sophomore year him coming in as a freshman. Freshman year, I meet you know these two St. Mike's kids coming in there, Rowan Fahey, Matt Lifka, both very strong runners. Yeah, I mean Matt coming into cross cross country, Matt was definitely you know that incoming freshman. He was probably our top freshman running at the time, so he was always you know, you know he was our top guy, and I was some chubby little freshman running 19 minutes three miles, so he was definitely someone, you know, look up to, trying to be, like, as fast as man, and definitely, all throughout high school, definitely pushed me through running a lot. Definitely a little immature, but awesome, super fun guy to be around. Watching him grow over the three to four years I was in high school with him was awesome. Always a really supportive teammate, great leader, he's a junior captain, so always been a great guy. I always thought Matt was a hard worker. Uh, he always uh, was in the weight room when none of us were. Uh, he would always be in the weight room after practice and 
we always would say he's crazy, but um, you know, we always thought he was uh, determined, committed. Um, I think he likes to have fun a lot, but he also uh, knows where to get down to it and put in the work. I think he's a very hard worker when he wants to be. Um, but on first impression, you might get, get the idea that he just wants to have fun, but I, I really think there's two sides to him. We really kind of kicked it off from there. We were on state team together, sophomore through uh, senior year. So it was really cool, really was able to bond with him through experiences like that. And just as a person, I got to know him really well um, through stuff outside of running, you know, like even if it was just going to the park or whatever, play basketball or playing intramural basketball, we were able to bond through a lot of stuff like that. So it was really cool. And Matt's just a great guy, you know. Um, I think it's very evident through his work ethic. Um, through things such as the marathon. He's a very dedicated guy and a very hardworking and very kind as well. Can you give us yeah. a, a brief background? I ran all four years of high school. Um, and basically what inspired the marathon was that I worked super hard, you know, every single year as I do. I was the captain and I really wanted to run postseason. I wanted to run regional, sectional, state. But they they didn't want me to, and I was kind of fired up at the time. I mean, that was two years ago, but I was I was fired up at the time, and I was like, you know, I want to like leave a lasting impression and like really do something special. So I just kind of decided I'm like, I'm gonna run a marathon. Like my uncle and my aunt, they run a ton of marathons, so I was like, I'm gonna do one myself. He's just such a hard worker, and you know, over the years, it's pretty evident that he's very good at keeping up with you know, even the. NXN guys on long runs back junior, sophomore year. I feel like Matt was disappointed with the way season went. I could kind of tell. I definitely thought though, if like, if anybody could run a great marathon like in, in the high school, it would be him. I remember um, one of the long runs we had, it was like 15 miles, which was the longest kind of any of us had done at the time. Like he killed it. Like he was dropping guys that were usually like run a lot faster than him. I mean, Matt was always that long run guy. Even he was up at the top guys, even some long runs cranking out at the same times that you know nobody else was doing. Summer long runs, I it was me and like Carson most of the time and like we could just kinda like we could kill it. We'd be doing like I don't even know what pace, maybe like six thirty average pace for like, you know, 12, 13 miles that we were doing over the summer. So like I was like I think I could definitely run like a really solid marathon time. Well, he was talking to Chuck and I during COVID one day when we were running at St. James. He's like, yeah guys, I'm just like I don't know, I feel stuck or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like, I think I'm gonna do a marathon. And I looked at him and was like, Matt, you're not doing a marathon. Like, it's gonna kill yourself. It's gonna kill you. Like, you're not gonna be able to do a track after that. So what I thought, he ended up being able to do track too, because he's a beast. Um, so I heard about it, like, in the very, very early uh, thought process. Um, so I, initially I was shocked. I was like, no way he's doing it. And then, uh, once it kind of came around past cross country season and he started doing those long runs, I was like, oh man, this kid's going to do it. And he did it. I think he could do it. It's just, um, I didn't think he was going to do it uh, when he said he was going to do it. Like, I, um, it's kind of crazy that like, uh, you think that like a high schooler would do a marathon. Yeah, I was uh, like mainly surprised of every of what that he did it. But, um, you know, all the power to him because it comes down to what he wanted. and. He wanted to do that, so. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I guess I first found out Matt was like flirting with the idea of doing a marathon during COVID. Um, that was the first time I saw Matt. It was around late March, early April of 2020 during lockdown. I went over to Matt at Bobby's house and he had this like full beard. Like, he, I don't think he'd shaved since school shut down. But he was just talking about how he's just building up for this marathon. And I mean, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't really have any thoughts about that. Um, I followed him on Strava, so I saw he got up to 16 miles that spring, and he hurt his knee. And then he was kind of focused on cross country from there, because we had a big cross country season. It was our senior year. I don't know. I thought he was crazy, because you know we still have a whole entire track season to, to run that next semester, and so I mean, that was kind of like really he running a marathon. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, if anybody on our whole entire cross country team myself was gonna run a marathon, it was definitely gonna be a match during our time. So, I mean, I was excited for him, ready to see what he was ready to put out. I thought it was pretty cool, because it was like, it was COVID, gave us a unique opportunity, uh, where you just had all this time, and 
there wasn't there wasn't like as much of a schedule because there was really no the track season was much later. So he had this opportunity to do a marathon, and I don't think he was super super motivated to do like in between cross country and track that especially that long stretch it was hard to stay motivated so he needed something else to motivate him and i thought it was a cool idea he wanted to do it like as like a big milestone and he had a purpose he had a goal and um he executed it really well um i hope one day that i can follow him and possibly beat his record but right now he's uh he's the main dog so yeah, I always treated uh, right. Matt Lipka as like a son, so. And when he, when you like start talking about how he was going to train for a marathon, once the season ended, he was just going to work right into marathon training. I was like, by all means, you know, because, I mean, you know, just knowing knowing Matt, knowing how he's kind of more apt for longer distances than most of the team is, um, you know, I definitely thought if anyone could do it, it could be him. So, um, you know, I thought going into the training, he was in a really good spot, and he could handle it, so. So I kind of planned it out that I wanted like at least a month of training because I already had like six months of training from cross country. So then it just became, all right, I got to do my long, longer long runs, longer recovery runs, longer um, tempo runs. So that's kind of what I was doing. It was like yeah, just the, um, the recovery runs. Like I got to the point where I could do like back to back 10 mile days, like just as recoveries. And I felt like totally fine. It was nuts to see like how in shape I really got like towards the end of those five weeks. The tempo runs were terrible because keep in mind I was I ran it December fifth, twenty twenty, so it was like really cold. And I remember waking up like before school, like you know six fifteen, and doing a, like a six mile tempo run. Like it's probably like 20, 30 degrees out, like terrible. So I hated the tempo runs. Um, and then I obviously liked the long runs because you know I've always liked long runs. And tempo runs were usually like around six miles, and I try and get around like like six minute averages so you know not like as fast but more just like longer distance and then usually at the end of each week i would do like a long run so i think i did my first one was a half marathon and then i think i did 16 and then i think i did 21 and then i took a, a week break from the long run and that's when i did the, the full 26. i you know i honestly didn't know like the best route to do but jake cluckholm like he knew like he knows all of Path. Jake came up with a really great route. Um, I think I did the, I don't like remember exactly, I think it's like the, what do you even call it, the Batavia route? It's the like, Aurora to the Fox Arena to the Batavia. Yeah, yeah, so that was the route that, that he chose, and I, I loved it, I thought it was great. I don't, like, I didn't have to wait around for cars much, which was crazy. I yeah. was thinking about, like, how much rest time I actually took, and it was, like, probably less than a minute just for, like, waiting for cars, so Jake did a really great job finding a good route for me. It turned out that um, Jacob Cluckholm found this absolutely perfect loop, 26 miles exactly from um, the three mile mark, right at south, then you go down the, uh, the Aurora branch into downtown Aurora, take the Fox River Trail back up to the Batavia branch, and you move back around, and um, that's a perfect 26.2 miles if you finish on the track. So, um, it's almost like a route from God. Yeah, it's perfect. So, I did it quite a bit of like cycling um, for like a couple years, like being injured with like cross training and stuff. That was kind of a loop I had done a couple times. I didn't know the exact distance, but I knew it was going to be kind of pretty close, somewhere between like 22 and 30 miles. So I kind of tried, I did it on maps a couple times, like in Strava, and um, kind of figure out how close it was. And I knew it would be kind of right about, I think I thought it would be a little bit under 26. So if we could finish up on the track kind of like he did, then it would be kind of perfect. So yeah, I took a look at the maps a few times and just kind of try to figure out like the perfect spot and end up working really well. I was really confident because you know I was so fired up from not you know making postseason like that was the whole reason that I would go out at six in the morning and do a you know those awful tempo runs. I was just like I was so determined to do it and you know after I ran the the 21 miler and you you biked it with me right? Yeah I was there a whole yeah. lot of miles right. swag logs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah um <laughs> But no, after that, the 21 miler, and I think I ran like, I don't know, I was a little bit over the goal of 652, I think, but like, I was really confident. I mean, I'm sure you all know about the two videos I did, Matt's 16 miler, Matt's 21 miler. Um, I was there for that, and on the bike, and that kind of needed me too, because you know, if you're running a marathon, you need water and fuel. I mean, that's kind of, kind of really, 
that's kind of really how, you know, the whole idea of like me filming, him running, me on the bike, it's kind of how that started, you know? But I mean, obviously I've seen that before, other runners do that, but um, it's kind of how I figured to, you know, do that, and I feel like it, it really worked out for the two videos I did. I think I made, you know, good content. So he kind of talked a little bit about like how he'd want a little bit of help, um, and we knew, we knew that you were going to kind of bike with him, but we thought yeah. kind of having somebody to run with him too would kind of help bring the energy up. So Billy and I both like were doing long runs that were kind of like 13 to 15 miles. So we kind of figured we'd meet him at the halfway point. We knew he kind of wanted to be a little bit more chill the first half. And then when he kind of needed a little bit of help, making sure he didn't get ahead of himself on the pacing, um, but also kind of just the moral support there. Yeah, I mean, there was a there was a plan and uh, Jake is really good at organizing stuff. I just kind of went along with it like everybody else. Um, we were meeting halfway and I knew that like, you know, Matt Lifka was going to be feeling it. And I think he was at halfway, but um, it was really cool uh, thing to do for him. It's going to finish. I mean, you, he'd been training with you for a while. Yeah. Uh, and I think, he, what, you got up to 21 miles? Yeah, um, I think I, I never like made my own prediction. He said he wanted to be under three hours. So I thought he could do it. Oh. Exact and what is I want to say I said like 250 maybe it was like 257. I low key think he wasn't gonna break three. I think that was my prediction was that he was gonna hit a wall and he was gonna run like 305. I remember like before the long run I think it was like the day before or something doing winter running and we all did predictions around and I was one of the guys that doubted him. I'm pretty I'm actually I'm pretty sure. Mama Lifka made some turkey burgers. I think I just had like turkey burgers and rice, you know, it's like really basic food, nothing crazy. Um, I got a lot of sleep. The morning of, I woke up and I, I gave my, um, actually going back to the night before, I remember I, I gave my uh, my Uncle Chris a call because he's done a bunch of Ironman marathons and he was giving me like a bunch of advice. Um, so then the next day, woke up real early. I forced myself to eat like a couple slices of toast. Like, I didn't, you know, I wasn't hungry at all, but I knew I needed the energy. Um, and then I just kind of suited up in all the all the gear since, you know, it was really cold when I was running it. Um, and then, who did I meet? You, Verge, and Maccabobby? Yeah, Verge was there too. Yeah. I was looking at the footage. Yeah, he was there, I like, the very guys behind South, and then we just started the run. Probably around, what time do you think? I want to say we met at, like, 7 o'clock. Yeah, it, was, it was early. Probably around 7, I, I started my run. Got there about 7 a.m., which is that's very early for me. But um, you know, Michael and I, at first it was just me and Mac, Bobby, biking me mad. First couple miles, Matt looks, you know, looks good, you know. Four miles, like 650 pace. And then he started dropping the pace a little bit. He's a little anxious, you know. Started getting further west. Um, it was a cold day too. It was 27 out that day. Yeah, so it was, it was very cold, very cold. And I got a later than everyone else because I was only going to do like the back half or whatever it was on my bike. And I remember, you know, hopping on, I had like five layers on, um, hopping on my bike, run, uh, biking through Arrowhead or whatever, uh, trying to figure out how to get on the route. And I ended up like missing them where I was like initially supposed to start. So I was only on for like the last six miles or so, which kind of sucked, um, but it, it was still great to be a part of. And yeah. The biggest thing about that morning was it was freezing. Most people just wanted to be there in the end. Most people didn't want to wake up early or like be there the whole time. I yeah. I, th I wanted to bike there the whole time with them. And it ended up it was just me and Matt biking the whole time with them. So Matt was filming and I was the one giving them drinks and food. My first few miles were fast. Like I didn't realize like, you know, I was feeling great. I was all antsy and stuff. And yeah, because the goal pace is 652. I was probably doing like at least 640s, maybe a little bit faster than that. Like, it's like three miles were pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, um, one of the things I did a really good job in of, high, in of in high school, and even still now, is kind of hitting like very specific paces. Like, I don't know, when we were doing workouts here at North Central and stuff, a lot of people would, like refer to me like the, the pacing metronome, just because I can kind of hit splits really well. So, um, obviously, like you said, I've, I've never gone exactly that far for pacing, but I kind of looked at my watch every once in a while as a reference, but more just kind of felt it out and beforehand. And, just make sure that we were trying to give him a little bit of a cushion so he could uh, be under three, but not get over our heads too much too. Oh, I was excited. And I didn't even realize it, but my, my parents actually were there too at the halfway point. They were like filming me and stuff, which was pretty cool. But yeah, once I saw Billy and Jake, I was just like, I was excited. Cause I mean, you, you like, 
they seemed really excited too. Oh, it, he was he was pushing because he started off. I think he started off on pace, but then he really the second half he really kicked it in, and he was like he was going under pace. Uh, I think he started to slow down a little bit, but like still under pace. So it was looking good the whole time. He, he was yeah, I was thinking. Um, I remember kind of asking you what his pace had been, like how we were doing, if we need to make up any time. And we we're pretty much right on. I remember thinking like. More just being a little concerned that we didn't want to push him too hard because obviously he'd done like I don't remember what his longest was before that, but I don't think he was gone twenty-one. Over. I was gonna say yeah, about twenty-one. Um, and I, from people I'd heard, like once you kind of hit that twenty-two mark, is where you really start to fatigue a lot. So I wanted to make sure that we we kept that cushion in case he faded a little bit, but that we didn't get over our head and like keep running that like six thirties to six forties. So my main focus was kind of like making sure Billy and I like. Kept him like on pace, maybe like a second or two under, um, but didn't like get ahead of ourselves and haven't really kind of fade the last couple of miles. I'm thinking uh, he's not he's not gonna stop, and uh, I'm thinking of those chewables he has to uh, keep him going every hour. But um, you know, uh, Matt, 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 just when he decides to do something, he's gonna do it. And he's gonna follow through on it. He's just one of those guys who likes to finish and. Uh, likes to uh, commit himself to the process. Part of it was just keeping like emotionally, like keeping myself under control, like not getting myself too excited. Because um, it's it is kind of hard to hold yourself back once in a while, especially like I was a lot more fresh. Obviously, Billy and I started halfway through, um, so keeping myself emotionally under control. Also, just using the watch as a reference, um, checking in every like 800 or a quarter. Like if I'm racing, I wouldn't do that, but as a pacer. I kind of wanted to make sure that we we're running pretty consistent. And 640 is, yeah, it's obviously it's it's not what like our race pace and stuff like is because we're racing a lot shorter distances, but it's like a little pretty close to what we do with some of our recovery runs. Or but um, you know, I uh, I just remember uh, some of the guys telling me I had to slow down um, and you know trying to not make it about me, but um, you know, I just had to learn that like this was kind of like a long run in a, in a sense and. You know, just had to get with the long run pace. I had to stay with Matt because I knew Matt was going to be hurting just as much as anybody else there, if not more, since he had 13.1 already under his belt. So, you know, just had to stay with the guys, just had to enjoy the process and enjoy the moment with everybody, even though at the time that maybe wasn't exactly what what happened. But looking back at it, I definitely think that um, it, it was uh, quite an experience. So Halfway through, though, we got to... Jacob and Billy, and that's when Matt wanted me to put on the music. First, first half was just grind time. The second half was more fun. But um, you know, Matt had a playlist that um he made, and I, I literally took the time the night before too to, because Matt has, has Apple Music on Spotify. I put every single song, like on his playlist, into like a Spotify playlist. I just I looked through it and took the time to do that. But um, once the music got on, the energy really started to build, and then once we hit. Eight miles to go, Chuck Sanders jumped in. Um, and then when we got to Warrenville, everyone else kind of joined in, like Virgin Alley, Carson, Z. So I'd say that's when it really started building. So I remember I was drove out to some random place I've never been to, parked my car. It took me like 10 minutes to actually find where I needed to like meet them. And I remember it was just cold as fuck. And I had like three layers on. I had my little uh, state team. Probably, it was probably what, like 30 degrees? Or, it was yeah, I, it 21. was 27, I saw in the video. I said 27, so it was like 30 degrees. And so I just sat there waiting for them for about uh, like five minutes or so. And I remember the first like two miles, you know, feeling pretty decent. And that was when I was first starting to get back into running from uh, my cross country break. <laughs> That's right, and you're out of shape, right? I was, I was definitely kind of feeling it. It was the longest run I ran since, you know, the end of cross country season, so first two miles feeling decent. You know, fourth, fifth mile, you know, you're starting to feel it. Definitely the last last three miles, I was kind of worrying. I was like, damn, I, I'm, I'm not feeling too good. But then, you know, the whole adrenaline rush of you know what's really going on here. We're Matt's running a whole marathon. It definitely gave me some little boost of energy towards the end. So overall, it felt pretty good for being my first long run. Long run. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was getting pretty excited when I, I knew he felt pretty good. Um, when we got close to like the 20 mile mark, we started to get close to like Top Golf, and there's like a bridge or two over there, and I could tell he was kind of hurting a little bit up there. 
Um, but then we started to kind of pick up a couple more pacers. Um, like I know Charlie, Carson, I think maybe Virginelli. We kept picking up more and more people as that came along. I think that was really helpful. Um, it was kind of nice to keep it more low key with just you and him the first half and then just me, us, us three and you um, the second half for most of it. But then as you kind of get towards the end when you're kind of running off of, running on fumes a little bit, it was nice to have that extra energy. We started to pick up a couple like fans and stuff, kind of cheering at a couple waypoints. And then especially when we got into the last like mile or two, we had a lot more people kind of bringing the energy up and kind of running with him, so. Yeah, so I mean, Chuck and Carson and I think, who else jumped in? You know, was that, was Verge was there. Yeah. I think Zeke jumped on the last mile. Zeke, yeah, Zeke. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, like, yeah, towards the end, I had, like, <laughs> like, two, three guys biking and another, like, like three, four guys running with me. So there's so many people with me. So at that point, like, it was crazy. It was it was really uh, funny just, you know, seeing everyone doing it with me. Mac and Bobby was handing me the, the chews and then the drinks and everything. I know you were helping too, Dale. It was tricky because, uh, I don't know, we just, he, you know, we didn't want him to have to slow down or stop, but it was also kind of tricky giving it to him while he's moving and I'm, I'm kind of getting off my bike. So we dropped it a couple times, but um, by, by the second or third time, we kind of had it down where uh, he would, I would kind of like dangle it and then he would come by and just grab it from my hand and I, I kind of dropped it at the same time. It worked really well um, so that he didn't even really have to break his stride to do it by the time we got into it. And then I guess in terms of like the later miles, I hit a wall pretty late, like later than I was expecting. I think like mile 24, 25 is when I was like, like I got hit by a truck. Most people say like mile 21, 22, I was okay then, but like a couple miles later, like I was really feeling it. So that was probably the toughest point for me. Last mile, I just like, you know, I had that last burst of energy, you know, like, I, you know, I, I was like so close to being done. Um, I was zooming at the end. I, I think I started like out kicking uh, like the pacers and everyone and I just kind of took it. I remember gunning it, you know, took the right off the prairie path. You know, I could see the could see the track, just had to work through the parking lot. And I hit the, the uh, 26.23. It was like right at the gates to the entrance of the track. So I just, I ran a little bit farther just to say, I, you know, I finished on the track or whatever. And like, once I got there and there's a big group of guys, you know, like cheering me on, I just like, just hit the ground. I was exhausted. Um, but no, I honestly felt really good the, that last mile of, uh, of the race, but it was more the, the few miles before that were tough. So it was just, you know, ton of adrenaline, ton of excitement. It was, it was special. I just wanted him to finish. I mean, like I, I could tell, like, he, I think he said at one point, I think it was at 24 or 25, he's like, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if it's gonna happen. And we were all just encouraging. We were all trying to, you know, keep him going. And you know, after 26, he just like was like, the end's in sight, but it's not quite there. And you know, we just had to be there for him. So I'm glad we had the people we did because I think without the people, and you know, I don't think Matt would have been able to get his goal and keep it the mindset that he had throughout the entire process. But he was able to finish. He was able to do well, and he was way under three hours. So. Congratulations, Matt Lifka. Oh, it was really fun. Um, so I think it was it was Jake and Billy that ran the second half with them. Uh, they were they were super great. They peeled off and he finished. It was really cool. Um, and then a lot more people came on the field to, to watch him finish. And there was food and donuts and stuff. It was really fun. It was really electric. I think um, everyone was excited. It was just a fun one-off event. That I mean, it was like similar to like a food mile or something where you're just having fun when we were all there. So. Yeah, so we were coming down from um, uh, the Warrenville route, coming down the Prairie Path, and I remember it just, we started picking it up maybe like a mile to go, just like a little bit, and then I want to say like a half mile to like a quarter mile, all of us just start moving a lot faster, and I was so confused. I was like, what's going on here? And then Matt's pushing the pace near to 5.30 minutes a mile. I want to say, I looked at my watch and it said 5.30 for like probably the last 200 meters or so. So it was, we were all getting excited and we all we let Matt go to the front, I'm pretty sure. And he came through, finished, collapsed, everyone was there clapping. The energy was just something else that you, know, you just can't recreate. Smile, Matt took off his South, more of a South Quarter zip to reveal the NXN jersey. That's when it got really exciting. And um, yeah, I don't know, Matt was just, he was just, you know, getting to the field, 
you know, finishing it out, and I'd say it was just, it was no, like nothing I've ever seen at the finish, you know. Everyone, lots of kids on the team just going out of there to support Matt at the finish and just crowding him. Um, yeah, it was just, it was just electric. It was electric that day. And, um, yeah, I definitely, definitely don't think that could be beat, you know. Oh, that, I'll never forget that. Um, uh, it's cool because he finished right where we finished our easy runs um, for high school across the country and track. So, like, he had that little speed boost that we all get uh, running along the sidewalk um, through the parking lot, and then you take a left into the other parking lot. So, he was picking up pace, and everyone noticed they were like, oh, okay, this kid's finishing strong. And then I was behind everyone on my bike when he came down onto the track, and I just remember throwing my bike on the ground after I hopped off and then throwing my helmet and he fell on the ground and I was like punch I was like you did it man you did it so that was just that was just unbelievable one of the greatest sports moments of my life for sure yeah I just knew that with such like a, a big undertaking with obviously a marathon it's a huge accomplishment especially to do it at such a young age um, so I wanted to have something like pretty special to commemorate it something you can kind of remember it by forever so we uh um, I had this this kit at home where you can kind of burn in um, like different like letters or designs and stuff. So kind of took a slab of wood, cut it to like a, a little bit like thicker than like a metal, and uh, like burned kind of I forget the exact words, but kind of made a commemorative piece like similar to like a finishing trophy for him. A plaque. It was like a little uh, what was it like like, like wood, wood, wood yeah wood wood. or something yeah. And it had like my initials and then like the date and then it had like uh, 26 miles in the middle. So it was, it was really awesome. It was like a little trophy for me. And I know a bunch of other guys showed up. I know Zeller showed up. And I think definitely like Corny and a lot of other guys. And we all just took a bunch of pictures. And the, I know the club home parents showed up too. I think I think Jake was probably the most excited guy about my, my marathon finish, which was, which was pretty awesome. So yeah, it was, it was awesome. First meal post marathon. What'd you eat? I think I had the leftovers from the night before, but like, really? but like way more of it. Like way more of it. Like a lot of turkey burgers, a ton of rice, and then I think I just like sat in my basement for like three hours. I know you're supposed to, you know, do all the recovery stuff, but I was just like gassed. I just sat down and I was like warm in my basement. I didn't want to do anything for like hours. So yeah, not too exciting of a post-marathon, but yeah, that's kind of what I did. Post-marathon shit, do you remember it? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't think I had anything in my system, like, you know? So I don't I don't really think there was much of much of anything to talk about, I don't know. It wasn't like I ate a bunch of food, you know, and then I went running, so. I, yeah. I was kind of cleaned out, so nothing, nothing too memorable there. Um, I mean, yeah, it's special. 255.27 was my, my final time. Yeah, no, it's 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 special. Like I obviously was in great running shape at the time. You know, four straight years of high school running is gonna make you, you know, kind of a beast. Um, but yeah, no, I was I was shocked like how much faster I, I ran than a three flat too. I think my uh, I think 6:41 was the average mile pace for my marathon, and that was way under the 6:52. So it was it was crazy. I, I surprised myself a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really unique situation, obviously, like, very different spot with, obviously, like, COVID and everything, but it was really cool. Um, I had never, that was the closest, like, to being, like, part of a marathon I had ever been in, and, like, even having, like, just a few of us there, not having a huge crowd and everything, it just felt really special to be part of, um, especially for someone's first time. Um, it was it was cool that it was just kind of all the people that he grew up running around and with um, kind of bringing him through there too, but for how well he did in his first marathon too, um, especially with like, he didn't have like a huge several month long training block leading up. He trained for the three mile all fall and then had a couple extra weeks where he had a little bit extra mileage, but for how quick he ran his debut marathon um, off of like very little training relative to a lot of marathoners, it was really awesome to see. No, I mean, it definitely was source of inspiration. I mean, seeing someone do that just like out of nowhere, say, like, yeah, I'm gonna run a marathon. It's definitely, you know, you don't see that every day. Something that I kind of looked up to, you know. I think it was just cool because he managed to put the work in. I mean, we all obviously had all this time and he made some good use of it. 
um, and he managed to stay motivated even when people weren't staying motivated. So I think it was just a good example of what you could do with that time when everyone was just kind of. Yeah, I mean, I I was kind of I was getting ready to have like um, surgery I, a couple weeks after the the marathon. That was kind of my last big big run I had before I was gonna have surgery. I had a planned surgery uh, on like both my calves a couple weeks later. So it kind of inspired me to after the, after I was starting to come back. Um, and it was kind of a tough time for a couple months. I kind of looked back um, every once in a while at like how special of a moment that was. And it kind of just reminded me of like how much fun running really is when you're doing it with the people you like to do it with and when you have those special moments. So it was something that coming back from my injury, um, it definitely helped me a lot. Just kind of remembering that as one of my last good memories of running um, before having the surgery. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, um, a runner, uh, it, uh, like the great runners, the good runners, any kind of runner wants to do a marathon. It's kind of a, you know, a legend. It's kind of a milestone that we all like want to do, you know, maybe even like on the bucket list. But, um, you know, uh, Matt Lifka decided that this was his time and it was. So, you know, I think uh, future wise, I will definitely want to try to do a marathon maybe after college or, you know, if it fits into my schedule. But I mean, right now I'm just kind of enjoying the process, living in the moment. And I'm glad Lifka had his moment uh, during uh, that big day. I think it was on a Sunday or Saturday, so. You know, it gave me something to do in the monotony of e-school because, you know, it just, it didn't feel like real school. And I'm sure a lot of you who, mm -hmm. I mean, all of you who had to sit through it remember that, but um, yeah. it just wasn't, it wasn't really the same. I guess from that, just finishing the marathon kind of, was a little bit of a spark in, you know, training. You know, it felt, felt good to see a teammate do that. And I mean, even to this day, like when people are talking to me like, oh, you run cross country and trap, do you do like marathons? I'm like, oh no, but I have a friend that ran a marathon in under three hours. I feel like that's, that's really cool to say. It kind of just gave us positive energy going into that track season where so much was canceled and up in the air. It was kind of just, kind of just a breath of fresh air in the middle of a shitty situation, mm. if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So. Man, it just really made me excited about running, you know? Um, like I said, that last moment where I ripped my helmet off, threw my bike on the ground, and was just like over the moon excited for him. Um, that was just really inspiring and, and really made me want to run and want to compete. Um, you know, I knew if Matt could do that, run 26 miles when it's freaking 20 degrees, I can, you know, put in the effort to have a good track season. I was definitely, uh a little bit surprised that um, I thought Coons approved it at first, but then I kind of found out later that he had no idea until after. So you know, Coach Coons would not approve of it, so probably why we just like did not tell him at all. <laughs> it was just funny because during the whole track season, you know, we teased him, and make little yeah. hints towards that he did run the marathon, but we didn't say <laughs> that. The Coons never knew. Yeah. <laughs> so it was funny. I feel like Coons definitely caught on. I don't think, think he did. Something. I don't think he did. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember it was when when you guys came back from your winter break, and then I was on my break, you know, because it was post marathon or whatever. And like everyone, yeah, was like, you did those like joking, walks, and, right? And, and, yeah, and yeah, I, would, I just I would do like walks on my own, and Coons was like, "Lifka, you've been running." And everyone was like, <laughs> laughing. And he's like, I think he thought I was slacking off, not you know, you know, taking too much time off. When in reality, that was not what happened. I feel like I, I remember we'd all, I'd just be like fucking around. We'd be like, hey, what's your guys' like longest run? I'd probably like 13. <laughs> Matt, yeah. what's yours? Yeah, you guys would always do that. Oh, I forgot. 26, 14, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh my god. I feel, I feel like a long run today. Matt, how many are you thinking? 26? <laughs> Any comments on your next marathon? When's it happening? Next marathon. <laughs> Um, no, I definitely do want to uh, run another marathon. Um, maybe training during college. I know Charlie and I are going to be running this uh, upcoming semester together a lot more. I'm not sure if we'll be, you know, marathon distance running, but no. but I would probably say like realistically post college. I, I'd give myself another year or two, and then you know when I just kind of like have my own place and I can really like you know focus on training. But no, I like my running career is not over. I might be taking a little bit of a break right now, but it's not over. That's it. Thanks, Chuck. All right. Well, that was the director of the Breaking 3 Project, Matt Dale. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Matt Dale. All right. Thank you, Carson. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Jake. That's all I got. Awesome.
But um, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on, Billy. All right, that is uh, great to hear. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks, Matt. That's all I got. Yeah, appreciate it. The date is currently Friday, December fourth, twenty twenty. Time is around eleven p.m. Um, approximately seven hours, I think. I'm gonna be biking with Matt Lifka for his marathon, his marathon debut. She a little something special. Um, got a little t my snazz with Gavin McBeth right here. Shout out to him. I go under my photos right now. Um, shoot. Supposing my camera roll, you guys, but um. This is what um Jacob Cluckhone and he's done he's done a lot for Matt in this marathon too, like plenty other route and shit. But this is what Matt is gonna get made by Jacob tomorrow. He doesn't know yet. He does he doesn't know that this is gonna be given him, this finisher award of sorts. But yeah it is. Because Matt's just been fucking grinding. He's gonna prove a lot of people wrong tomorrow, but um yeah, I just thought I'd show you guys show you guys that. Yeah. Next up, I'm going to be searching for my speaker. Um, so, um, as you guys can see, my speaker is working right now. Matt's freaking running a marathon tomorrow. I can't believe it. Um, Matt really is an inspiration for all of us, I feel like. So I don't think anyone else on the team can really do that. He's going to hurt through this marathon, through that wall. And I mean, 650 pace, it's nothing. We do it every day. You do that every fucking day. Call that per path. But I personally think Matt's gonna get in a good rhythm in the beginning. It's just gonna be me and him. And then like the Pacers, shit, gonna carry him through. Uh, my prediction right now, I'm gonna say Matt is going to run a 2:58:41 marathon. Like chicken tape bumping and uh yeah. Well yeah, Matt's probably gonna show up here soon, but yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Fuckers on mouse, but tell me What is up Zwag Vlogs? We're officially here, we more of a South High School. Um got Mac Bobby, Matt Lifka. Currently planning out the caffeine. Vlogs, what's up? Big day, baby. This is this is a big day. It's about to start. It's the day. This is what we've been working for. Yeah. You already know. But uh yeah. Who's, who's, who's carrying the TP? You know I'm gonna have to take a shit during this run. I'll carry the TP. <laughs> really? All You're gonna right. have to you, you take yeah. a shit before yeah, are you, we got here? Are you here? kidding me? Yeah. On, on the okay. 21 miler. The 21 yeah. miler. Yeah, so. so. Mile six. It feels amazing. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. It's not that bad. It feels good. We got Macabobby here. Um, and Before this starts, Macabobby, do you have any like predictions for Matt? Last night I said he was gonna run 258.50. I said 258.41, so yeah, this is gonna be close. Yeah, yeah I we'll think Verge said 258.40. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see who wins this bet. Chuck said like 301. Yeah. <laughs> so I, Chuck, Chuck doesn't believe in Matt. So I think I think we'll break three. But um, yeah, catch you guys later. Right before we start. All right, we're about to start the marathon. Start the marathon baby. Got Matt Lifka. He's been working for Train this. Hard. Good. Five weeks of training. Yeah. Well, plus like the entire cross country. Yeah, he's so, ready. I'm ready. Um. We got Sheen right here too, and just pulled up. Yeah, I didn't know Sheen was but, um, biking today, but I'm good. Glad seeing. But um, yeah, I mean, I think think we're about ready. So um, see you on the other side, Zwag Vlogs. First step's the hardest step. Runners, always said. for real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, you wanna do, do it? Here, I'll do it. Yeah. All right, start your Mac on. What's my starting command? The, the usual. That. Set. Bang. Okay. Bang. I'll say. Yeah. Yeah. Bang. Runners on your mark. Set. Bang. It begins. The marathon begins. 26.2 miles of grinding. We got Mike Newman here. This is the start of the 2020 Matt Lifkin Marathon. 
here on the Illinois Prairie Path and Fox River Trail. Um, weather's 27 degrees, sunny, no wind. So yeah, catch you guys later. You know, Matt's pretty excited. 639 first mile and I'm gonna crash, so yeah. that rhythm. Just play the second mile. I feel a little bit excited, but yeah, we just got Mac Bobby right here. He's also a little stupid. But I mean, we'll just forget about it. It's all good vibes, man. It's a marathon. As you can see, we got some wood tards right here. Mac Bobby! If anybody came here from TikTok, I, I didn't say the R word. No. Something's okay. Track here. It's 
somewhere right behind Monkey's house. And we have a train, holy shit. Never see trains on here. Whoa. Beautiful dog. Trying to fuck with Hollywood Cole. I went Molly G, bro, flying Hollywood. We got lift in the front. It's part of the path. Something that you probably should know. It's that slum dog, millionaire, Bollywood flowing up. My real friends never hear it from me. Fake friends write the wrong answers on the mirror for me. That's why I pick and choose. I don't get shit confused. I got a small circle. I'm not with different crews. We walk the same path. We got on different shoes. I'm not ready. About six miles in. Don't like my women single. I like my chicks and tools. And these days, all the girls are down the road. I hit the strip club Yo, and all the bitches find the pole. Plus, I've been sipping soda. Shit is moving kind of slow. Just tell my girl to tell my friend that it's time to go. Keep my cloudy. That's how I love it. You know you at the top and only heaven's right above it. We own. It's just nation. Motherfucker, if you ain't running with it, running from it, motherfucker. All right. That's a matter. On the list of guest names And all of my riders do not give a fuck X games, yeah, yeah, yeah. guns take boys into pussies Sex change And I smoke till I got chest pains And you niggas know I rep my gang like Jesse James Women are possessive And they wanna possess Wayne I've been flying so long I fell asleep on the fucking plane Skinny pants and some vans Call me triple A, get my advance in advance Amen, as the world's spinning dance in my hands Life downhill. is a beach, I'm just playing in the um, sand uh, Wake smooth. up and smell a pussy, you niggas can't see got them, me got the Spanish. But never overlook me I'm on the way to the trail, it ain't no telling where it took me Yeah, and I ain't Stay a trailer, but don't push me Bill Dog's jam right now. 
Yeah, we're just cruising. Last mile was like 6.29, so yeah. You know, we just straight up vibing right now. Just saw one of the Hubble Health teachers. Yes, the Hubble Health teacher. The Lynn, Hubble Lynn Hubble Hubble Miller. Teacher. Lynn Miller. The legendary Lynn Miller. Some uh, distance on Palatine type shit though. So yeah. This is Marathon Morning in Batavia. Marathon, Matt, on Marathon Morning. I don't know about you guys, but if I were running right now, I'd drive a sub four. So yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Currently by Rotolo. We're at one across race. Let's fucking go, baby! On your left. Mile from Chuck and Carson, heading up this big hill. Got some woozy sleep paralysis demon music. We're just vibing. Octavia sign, got some Nirvana. We just vibing. I think after this run, that's gonna achieve Nirvana. Yeah. Wait, what's that even mean? Nirvana is like enlightenment. Once you break through the cycle of reincarnation, you have to become enlightened. The cycle of what? Of reincarnation. Oh, yeah, he, he will be Nirvana after this. Come on, B. Now we got Chuck with us now. Last exchange, smooth as fuck. Eight to go. And yeah, we're doing well. Way to go, boys! Looking great! Keep up the grind, let's go! Yo! You know, we got the Moser taking over 2K18 on my mama! You know, 19 and a half in. Feeling good. This quote unquote wall, but I think Matt's got it. Got a caffeinated. Yeah, we just grabbed it. No, about to get back past where we started, or kind of where we started, by the uh, tunnel. So, yeah. Another exchange coming up, too. Go baby!
got three miles to go. Oh shit, and we got Carson! Hey, a whole gang! Everyone's here! Dude, last three miles, bro. Ooh, oh, it's must have been brutal, dude. Oh, it's kicking, bro. Home stretch, baby! Start. I'm wearing on my Alex head jersey that I gave him. Almost home, baby! Two to go! Got Mac, Bobby, and Zeke. Is he gonna run the last mile with him? We got the boys. One to go. These kids. Jersey's out for that. We're in the home stretch, mile to go, baby. Go. Matt, basically there. Quarter to go. Let's get it! 
Let's fucking go! 26.2! 26 26.2! 26 26 oh, 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 Wait, wait, what time? The time! The time! Let's fucking go! Woo! I love this finishing song. Let's get it! I think I just fell in love with a porn star Turn the camera on to the porn star Turn the corners in the porn car Call the corners by the same way All my homies here All right, that came out to pace me The bike with me Getting out of the end Make a lot of these guys Are you for Matt Lipka? Sub 3, baby, I did it Sub 3! 26.2 miles 2 hours, 55 minutes And 27 seconds Consistent 640s, that's nuts. What's up, Billy? So uh, you're not running for like a week, right? Probably over, yeah. At least. I thought you were doing that. <laughs> How do you feel? How's your muscles? Uh, my hammies are really tight, but... Did you really finish strong, though? Josh? What was your worst mile? Hey, what the, fuck, what the fuck are you doing here? Yeah, what? <laughs> it's like football. <laughs> Get the shit out of you, dude. Let's go. You're learning this moment. <laughs> you grew out your hair, Jacob. Wow. Oh my god, you need a crazy. It's like it's like kind of turned into a mullet. Hey, yo, so I it oh, I have it. So, it's in my bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, I got, I got hella snot. Yeah, I was, I was worried, but I, like, I thought it was good because. <laughs> Dude, Matt, how did the like mile twenty to like twenty six feel? Like, um, like, pretty good. Is you still hitting six forties? Yeah, I was like mile 23, 24, That was hurting the worst. Once twenty four hit, I was I was working. Damn. Bad, yeah. And then last like half mile, I was feeling good. Just who dropped the Pokemon cards? Yeah, yeah. Peasley yeah, and Sing here or something? Like what? <laughs> Magic together. None of our math class Guys, like, do I do drills or? Yeah, where, where, where is uh, where is the chick? Chuck was gonna shoot a shot with. Like, what's what's gonna help me? Yeah. You should do a, you should do a cool down ten mile. Actually, yeah, good, good one, Ron. Ah, yes, sir. That was like we were lucky, bro. Like we barely had to stop. Yeah, it was being in the morning though. Like I think that helped. I was worried at Winfield though when we stopped and we just kind of went for it because we had an opening. Yeah. Yeah. We got Mama Papa Lou. Oh, you and that guy were like trying to stop him. Oh, they got donuts. They got donuts. They got donuts. Yeah. Oh, the one guy was like, "What's going on?" Matt Lifka finishing play. No way. Woo! Uh, 26.2. That's awesome. Oh, baby, that's so sweet. Yeah, that's, that's I got like a burning kit at home. So oh, like, that's so wood. cool. Dude, that's actually awesome. Wow. That's cool. Hey, respect. Oh Zilla, you're out here. Respect, my guy. Sure. Oh, yeah. 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 Let's do it. Drugs, rap them, please. Taliban, rap serving 
No, they my guests on E. Let's go. 30 hollow tilts in the stendo. Shadows keep waving by my window. Thanking God he saved my life on kick those. Thank you. Still sipping oil, me go sit go. Hold up, hold up. Get right with you. I'ma get right with you. Bad with you. Then dismiss him. Bad. Really hit up, take no pictures. Flash, middle finger up in the system. Woo. Get right with you, I'ma get right with you. Wow. Woo. Get right with you, I'ma get right with you. Hello. Woo. Get right with you, I'ma get right with you. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Get right with you. All set. All set. In the kitchen with a lot of white. white. I done fucked a lot of n****s wife Make a million, then I make it twice M. Bought the Rafe and had the ceiling light Ray. I like a bitch with some cellulite Ooh. Take a brick to a take a flight Ooh. Used to ask what the lit was like Where? Now I'm asking what the lit look like uh. Copy Mike Tyson bite ah. 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 Smoking cookie, yeah, that's dynamite cookie. Woo. Lamborghini White on white, Lamborghini. all these diamonds, yeah, they white on white, white. Taking chances, hit the road to die hey. Send my shooters, come and take your life Brr. Born woo, count a hundred thousand, start snowing woo hundred. Go and go, that it round clip, town for all my ligament The more dog for minutes, hey. you trapping hard for pennies Go, hop in the frog, is tennis, Screw. asking the Lord, forgive me hey. Hold up, hold up, you, yeah. get right with you, I'ma get right with you Bad, yeah. then dismiss him, bad, woo. Really hit up, take no pictures Flash, middle finger up in the system Woo. Get right with you, I'ma get right with you Whoa. Get right with you, I'ma get right with you Hello. Woo. Get right with you, I'ma get right with you yeah. Get right with you Pop me a missile, hey. take me a picture Flash. Get right with you, I'ma get right with you Like Christmas, like Christmas, white like tissue White, drink to a fish, drink, cut like scissors, cut, boy got wisdom, wisdom, no vixens, smack, whole game itching, yeah. the wrong one tripping, better run attention for the tension, hundred round drawn, listen, you can run the end up missing, get him knocked out for a ticket, how many young do the sentence, oh man, whip up the white, wind it, pick up the pipe and she get no penny, no, rockstar living life, landing. You can do better, never settle, keep a beretta, can't see the pressure I tell the plug, mail em. which way, that way, tell em Ay. Hold up, hold up, you Get right with you, I'ma get right with you Bad, you Then dismiss em. Bad, Woo. I ain't really here to take no pictures Flash, middle finger up in the system Woo. Get right with you, I'ma get right with you Whoa. Get right with you, I'ma get right with you Hold up, Woo. Get right with you, I'ma get right with you. Yeah. Get right with you.